On this week's podcast, we have Kenner French. He is the vastholdingsgroup.com CIO, and he's an author, keynote speaker, and he's built Vast Solutions Group, and he also does tax, wealth, and artificial intelligence for entrepreneurs. The cool thing about him is Kevin O'Leary, aka Mr. Wonderful of Shark Tank fame, and Vicky Gunn-Valstern, noted entrepreneur and real housewife talk about Kenner. <laughs> to see their videos, comments, and or to schedule a meeting, go to fastsolutionsgroup.com. Interesting fact about Kenner, he went to both Harvard and a community college, and he has been mentioned on NBC, Fox News, ABC, and more, and he hosts the tax clubs, Tax and Tips with Kenner daily at noon Eastern time. And he is on Clubhouse. That's what he does on Clubhouse. And he also, um, something I like about him is that he has had two books and he's got another book coming out. He's also a contributor to Forbes.com and he's frequently a keynote speaker. And um, he is, you can go to rkennerfrench.com or Amazon to get his books and you can use code 69626. And then of course, all information provided by Kenner on this is considered entertainment, not consultation. I have to make sure I say that for him. Get free articles and information from vastsolutionscript.com. And then also you can hear him on anchor.fm, Vast Solutions Group. Kenner is one of the only clubhouse who isn't an influencer, but he doesn't care. And he likes to talk to his staff. <laughs> and that's what he's saying here. He also has the Dave Matthews Band fan club on Clubhouse too. Uh, or you can go to dmbfan.club to listen to him there as well. So fun things with Kenner. We've both been on each other's Clubhouse in the rooms doing kind of all kinds of fun things. That's how we met. And before I get to his interview with him, which you're going to have a lot of fun with that. There's a couple things I need to do. First of all, I need to mention our affiliate link of the week. It's Stitch Fix. And if you go to peppershock.com slash offers, select the Stitch Fix link, you get $25 on me to try Stitch Fix. And the way it works is you get clothing hand selected by their expert stylist. You get to try the pieces on at home. They send it to you. You can buy your favorites and then send back whatever you don't like or what send back the rest. But then you also get a $20 fixed styling fee that covers your stylist expertise and time, but then it gets credited towards anything that you decide to keep and buy. So think about utilizing Stitch Fix as a tool for you. Uh, we've partnered with them to give you $25 free for utilizing Stitch Fix. So peppershock.com slash offers, or we'll put it in the show notes as well. And then I also want to share with you this week's marketing essentials, the basics that you need in order to survive your marketing expedition, this path that you're on to help you build your brand and your bottom line. So um, a lot of people have been asking us about podcast production and distribution and things that we can do or how you can utilize podcasting as a tool for your own brand, right? And so if that's overwhelming to you, we created a site called potterific.com, P-O-D-E-R, ific.com that you can get more information about how to build your brand and bottom line utilizing podcasting. There's a couple things that you can do. You can allow us to help you create it, come up with a strategy, the plan, the distribution, the graphics, all of the elements that you need to help you with a successful podcast, right? We've been doing this now for quite a while. We've got the ins and out of it. We're also producing podcasts for other people at Pepper Shock. So if this is something that you need, we can help you unlock all your nerves and free up your time to help you create stellar content for your audience that needs to hear what you have to say. We can help you set up an automation for getting guests on your show, all the things that you would need to think about in getting your podcast. And that is now a marketing essential since people have started listening through the pandemic more, spending more time on screens, spending more time listening to, to audio books on tape, it used to be called, uh, audiobooks, and podcasts have really risen to the top of what people are listening to. So we really feel like this is something that you can include in your strategy if you haven't already. Or maybe you started one and you're just struggling to get it up and running and continuously doing it. So we can help you. We can edit. We can do all the things that we do to help with podcasts. So there's your marketing essential for the week. Now, without further ado, let's listen in on Kenner French's podcast interview. 
Welcome to Pepper Shock Media's Marketing Expedition Podcast, keeping you up to date with the latest in marketing and advertising. Now, here's your host, Ray Allen. Welcome to the Marketing Expedition Podcast. I'm your host, Ray Allen. Welcome to the show, Kenner French. Kenner French is in the house. Good to be here. I'm excited about this. Hopefully, your listeners are going to have as much fun as I will. Uh, I love it. I love it. So just so everyone knows, Kenner and I met on Clubhouse. If you don't know about Clubhouse yet, you're going to learn about it. But Kenner, tell everyone what you do on Clubhouse. What I do, I spend time on Clubhouse hopefully hopefully adding value and learning a lot. It's a great app. And uh, one of the things that I do is I've started a couple different clubs. One, <laughs> Dave Matthews Fan Club or DMBFan.club. I started the Tax Club on the app. It's the biggest of its kind. And then I also uh, have run, uh, started, uh, you know, Tax Club Brazil, Tax Club Germany, Tax Club UK, Tax Club Canada, et cetera, et cetera. Basically adding value to the people who come into rooms, as they're called, uh, with respect to taxes and with the goal of lowering taxes for uh, entrepreneurs. It's been a good time. Yeah, and I love what you're doing with the tax club because I have gotten a lot of value from you and from the people that you interview or the people that you bring on as moderators. So, yeah, it's definitely been super helpful. I think that the amount of information that I got from listening to a few of the tax rooms that my CPA probably would have charged me thousands of dollars for. <laughs> Yeah, I get that a lot. I think it's a, that's the reason for Clubhouse. I mean, there's so much value that can be had in those rooms, and plus, it's fun. It's a you know interactive podcast, uh, which you know I love podcast. Podcast is the way to go. But then again, this is just kind of a different element of a podcast. And when I'm in your rooms, you know, you've complimented me, uh, and when I've learned tremendous amounts of uh, uh, about marketing in your rooms and people really should uh, explore that as an avenue. I love it too. Yeah. Every, we were on every Wednesday for the marketing expedition club and, and having you there from your perspective has been tremendous value, I think for people. So tell everybody what you do as your day job. (laughs) Mm, My day job. I have a a couple things. Uh, I run a company called that solutions group.com and we do uh, tax finance and artificial intelligence to lower tax liability for business owners, usually entrepreneurs, small entrepreneurs, number one. Number two, I run a company called Vast Holdings Group uh, based out of Nevada. I live in Seattle, parenthetically, by the way. Uh, And basically what we do is we invest in companies, small companies, startup companies. uh, As an example, maybe artificial intelligence oriented companies uh, or maybe even uh, financial advisory companies. uh, It's a conglomerate, small conglomerate, that invests in a number of different things, really with an eye on, you know, uh, creating new jobs and and trying to make a, a couple pennies for the stakeholders. And then uh, also I'm a, I'm a father of two, married to my bride for many years and uh, having a good old time. Oh yeah, and how old are, you have two boys, right? Yeah, two boys, one uh, 21 and one 13 year old. Awesome, that's right, I have a 13 year old too. I remember us talking about that because you were headed to a baseball game for your son. <laughs> oh yeah, we're way into it, we're a baseball family. I've started two, two different uh, nonprofits for business, uh, or for, sorry, for baseball players and uh, families around our location and it's uh it's good that's i do that in my off time <laughs> yeah because you have lots of, of spare time i'm sure <laughs> let's talk i mean because we are on a marketing expedition right and and you know when you when you want to invest in companies what are some things that you look like what, what do you look at in terms of what they're doing and why you would want to invest in those companies and how they are in the marketplace and what kind of things that they are doing to help build their brand and your bottom line when you invest in them. Yep, love it. So frankly, the reason I was so interested in potentially being on this uh, show was, well, I've done everything wrong in marketing. I, I've been semi-retired, I was semi-retired for 10 years. I've done everything wrong with marketing. So I think I'm the perfect case example for some of your people. And why? Well, because now I'm learning about marketing. So um, the answer to your question is, well, to this point, I've just been looking for companies that solely do a business based on referrals. So, you know, referrals is a great way to do this. There's just no doubt about that. At the same time, really, to really expand and scale, well, you got to do marketing. So the answer to your question is now I'm viewing it as, well, if I'm going to get involved in a company, it's got to have no marketing. It's got to have no, or at least a lack thereof, so I can improve on the marketing element. So hopefully I can turn a, a pre-existing company that has just a great idea, great product, 
great service with no marketing and therefore then really uh, create value, shareholder or stakeholder value and make a couple of pennies because we've turned on the spigot as far as marketing goes. So again, I'm looking for a company that does not have a good marketing so we could add value and provide some impetus for uh, revenue growth based on marketing. That's great. I love to hear that. That's like music to my ears to to be able to invest in a company and then allow them the ability to utilize marketing to help them grow and scale. So kudos to you. I think that that's a great avenue for companies that need that from investors who recognize and, and value marketing tactics and, and plans and things that you can do to help scale and grow the business. Yep, yep. It's key. That really is key. And at the same time, by the way, I'm going to also say... I don't think it's a good idea to go it alone, you know, to not use a marketing company or marketing professional because it's so hard. I've learned that, and, you know, through while I was summer retired, as I mentioned, for 10 years, I retired very young, right? I figured out that you, you can't go it alone. I've made some mistakes along the way, as I've mentioned, I'm the perfect case study. You need a professional, you need an advisor who can walk along the path with you because you don't want to get in a car and drive alone if you don't know your path. And if you have, in this case, a marketing advisor, uh, maybe social media content manager, whatever the case is, who can get you from point A to point B, <clears throat> it'll help you that much better than, oh, here's an example. Let's say you want to drive from Seattle to Philadelphia. You drive alone with no map. You're probably going to end up in Texas, right? But if you have someone who's got a, a GPS or a map, it's pro they're probably going to get you more efficiently from point A to point B. I love that. And because we're going on a marketing expedition, I love that analogy because we need a roadmap in order to get from point A to point B and understand what success looks like along the way. And then when you get to your destination, look back to say how you got there and the ways that you did so that you can replicate what worked and dump what doesn't, right? Yep, 100%, 100%. So tell me, okay, so you said that there's some things that you did that were not necessarily the, the best tactics to take. So I wanna know, what are some things that you did that uh, maybe weren't the best ideas? <laughs> mm, yeah, so this is just between me and your listeners and your listeners won't tell anyone, right? Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, I'm embarrassed to say, I, I eschewed social media. I completely disregarded it. Uh, I knew it was a good idea. But I didn't want to have any part of it. Um, that was a big mistake. I can't even tell you how big of a mistake it is. Since I've been getting involved in social media, now we're getting leads, right? And what, what's a company? R&D, research and development. Your, your product's got to be pretty good, right? And then marketing. If no one knows about your product based on your R&D, well, the, it's probably not going to succeed. So you have to have marketing. So I didn't have the marketing component. I didn't have the social media component. Whatever, I'm going to throw some out. You know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google. Um, we just didn't do that, and that that cost me so much money. It was it's difficult to scale without that as a presence being meaning social media presence. Right, right. Yeah. Now the the what's old is new. Pinterest is coming, making a comeback, I think. And so another another one for you to look at is Pinterest. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, I forgot that. And that, as I understand it, is there's a lot of uh, well sound sexist it's not meant to be uh, a lot of women who are on pinterest and those are the ones with the spend uh the dollars as i understand it on goods and goods and services so that's a very good spot as i understand it and it is making a huge run as a result no there's definitely different demographics and different ways to reach different people but uh i didn't realize that pinterest was the third largest search engine next to google and youtube so there's definitely some yep. areas there to, to explore. Okay, so tell me what happened? How did you get to where you are, where you said you could retire early? Like, give me your path. Like, how did you get started? What did you start doing? What's the first thing that you, you invested in? Like, give me your, your pathway to where you are now, Kenner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for, uh, as I mentioned, I live in Seattle now. I lived, uh, you know, went to high school in Seattle, went to Washington State University for undergrad, then Harvard for grad school. Decided to go to work in uh, New York City in, in, in investment, investment research. I wasn't having uh, that much fun working 24 hours a day, so I decided to start working for you know investment research. I figured, you know, we were working with big institutions. Um, I thought, yeah, you know, these people care about the uh, the rates of return, et cetera, et cetera, for the end user, you know, whatever client, even though they're big institutions. And I figured out they didn't. I wanted to work with small business owners who cared about their employees or who cared about you know their bottom line. So I started working for a company called ING. I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, right? Uh, but And then I decided, well, wait a minute. 
I'm going to start reading up on entrepreneurship. I read a book called, um, um, well, The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz, and then also Robert Kiyosaki's All His Books. Kind of taught me that, whoa, wait a minute, I should look at being an entrepreneur. There's a lot of, uh, I have a lot of faith in myself. Well, let me indicate so by going out on my own. So 2006, started a little company, all myself. I remember starting it. And then all of a sudden, whoa, it started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I started making enough dough that I could buy some other companies that provided what I call mailbox money. Money that came in even if I didn't have to do anything, right? That to me was a key. I wanted to go spend time with my kids. I want to spend time with my wife, with my friends. So the answer to your question is, well, a lot of things have provided me to be able to do that. Now, then the question is, meaning, uh, you know, uh, be semi-retired. Then the question is, why did I decide to un semi retire? Uh, I'll just tell you. Wow, this is actually kind of a, a, a surprise to me now that I look back. Well, once my ego, uh, all my buddies started to get uh, really loaded and pass me by and sit up tongue in cheek. And then number two, I was getting a little bored. So I thought, well, wait a minute. I'm going to go out and figure out what I can do to truly uh, uh, make a better living, maybe for my kids, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it, it it's turned thing. I'm I'm loving it now. I'm actually energized. I'm happier now than I ever have been in my professional uh, career. Excellent. Okay, so tell me some success stories of people that you've served or businesses, uh, you know, that you've served and how how the outcomes turned out to be in your like. What comes to mind first when I say people that you've served that you've helped along the way? I got a call about I'm going to say it was about a month ago. Um, from a guy who uh, was not getting good advice, right? So we just we just sat down, well, over the phone, I should say, for a, it was about an hour. In that hour's time, I saved him three hundred thousand dollars, and that was actually kind of simple. The mixes, the misses that his advisor uh, was was providing. So that made me feel pretty darn good. Yeah. Or even going to uh, an example where uh, just a little while ago, I sat uh, sat down via uh, via conference call and showed an advisor uh, how to save his client simply $50,000. There, again, are so many ways one can save money based on uh, the tax code. You just have to be creative and spend the time to do the research. And again, going back to my point, a lot of uh, a company is based on two things, R&D, research and development, and marketing. And I think we're pretty darn good at the R&D or coming out with uh, good research and development as far as products and solutions for our clients. So when you say you get tax credits for R&D, can you give an example of how maybe a service-based company might be able to take advantage of that tax credit? Oh, uh, by the way, I wasn't really specifically talking about R&D tax credit. I was just talking about in general. I think that's uh, that's the basis for uh, a company, R&D, research and development, meaning their products and services, and then also on top of it, marketing. That's what leads to a successful company. But now, yeah, to your point, yeah. R&D, research and development, a lot of people, a lot of companies don't realize that uh, even service-based companies could get research uh, credit back from the government, meaning they could get back money from the government because they're providing uh, something new to the marketplace, new research that's not available. Because the government wants, uh, uh, you know, things to expand. They want, they want new, um, new research, new processes, new systems out in the world, really, in the United States, because it makes well, for a better economy, it helps public policy, et cetera, et cetera. So the government gives money, even service-based uh, businesses, money to do so, to do research and development. And sometimes it, 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 it takes almost no work and, and no cost to the company. So it's called R&D research. And what I would say, uh, research credit, what I would say is contact a, a professional advisor, maybe a, a CPA, a tax attorney, and at least begin the discussion because usually a lot of money can be saved and some people just don't go down that road and it's worth going down. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. That's something I, w- I want to continue to explore as well. Okay, so yep. let's, uh, let's shift gears a little bit. What are your favorite tools that you use or apps or things that you use in your business that um, you would recommend to others that they they should absolutely know about that if they don't know about, they, you know, could have made more money or something long, long ways, or maybe more resource or time or energy. What, what are some tools that you use, Gunnar? Mm, uh, one, a phone. And on the other line, other end of that phone, a marketing professional. I mean, I know it's simple, but it's true. You need to be in constant communication with your marketing professional because they're going to be able to specialize and help you craft a message 
to your market. And again, without marketing, your business is going to fail. Even even if uh, because you can't scale, as I mentioned, because back in the old days when I was uh, not doing it strategically or smartly, just doing it on you know referrals, you can't scale your business. So. I mean, I know that sounds simplistic and I'm probably preaching to the choir, but that's what I would say. You have to have a phone, have to have on the other end your marketing special. Now, exclusive of that, have to have a good CRM, uh, Contact Research Management Database, a very good one because you've got to be able to market to them and know it to them, meaning your clients. Yeah. And you also have to know what's going on with your clients to your internal team so you can, communi- so you can communicate uh, internally and externally to your clients. Uh, what else would I say? Um, we believe in using a thing called Process Street. Uh, what is that? That's a systematized uh, app that helps us to systematize every single thing we do in our business. If people give us referrals, we want the client to have the same exact uh, process all the way along the line from beginning of the engagement all the way to the referral, all the way to the next referral. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So we use again this process called uh, the software called Process Street, which has helped immensely to uh, streamlining our processes so nothing falls through the cracks. Oh, that's great! I'll have to check that out. That's awesome. So okay, so let's talk about um, in addition to tools. What are some resources or places that you go to keep up to date in your industry in business? Uh, you know, I know you're a Forbes magazine contributor, right? What, what are some things that you mm-hmm. research? I've learned a lot about uh, about taxes, about even even things far afield than, than my, my tax field, right? So I would say Clubhouse is an unbelievably good, um, uh, good uh, resource for learning about, uh, again, uh, for us, taxes, but other elements outside of the realm of taxes. Uh, another source, I hate to say this, but... Um, um, and it's kind of nerdy, AICPA, meaning it's our industry-specific uh, resource for tax professionals. That's been a huge, huge uh, uh, help. Um, and then also starting a network group. We have a network group uh, for our company at vastsolutionsgroup.com where we get vendors to come in and provide uh, networking, not only for our business, not only for tax, but also the peripheral elements of the tax business so you know we have a bookkeeping uh, bookkeeper who comes in as part of that group we have um, 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 a specialized portion of an ea we have a tax sorry of a t- uh, that's a tax group i should say um, uh, we have a tax provider who comes in as part of that focus group now what also happens as having that focus group we not only learn but we also get referrals and give referrals and that makes our business that much stronger because we have a cohesive group that's uh, sharing referrals back and forth as well as information so we learn that much more in our industry that's great i always say yes referrals are the best form of you know word of mouth advertising but what are you doing to accelerate your referrals so that way you can you know continuously build build upon that so i think it's great that you're doing a networking group and inviting your vendors to come and communicate with each other and provide value to to others too so then they know what they offer and how they do it so that's a great way to accelerate your word of mouth advertising in the form of referrals. So excellent job. And you know, on top of that, um, you know, it was great us getting referrals, but really we would, we, I'm finding now we're getting more referrals because we have an online presence. We're doing social media marketing. We have a marketing arm out there. So before we were a boutique that didn't do that. So people would get a referral, let's just say, and they'd go out on the internet, look at us, and they'd like, eh, there's just not much there. So the result was, well, it was harder to transition them from becoming a prospect to a client. So that marketing, uh, even if someone's a referral-based business, sure, they can't scale as quickly. And at the same time, it's harder to get that social con- confirmation. So another reason of doing marketing, um, even if you're a referral-based business. Absolutely. Okay, who has inspired you or motivated you or given you some resources and tips along the way that has helped you get to where you are now? Mm, My bride, Kristen French, my wife. Without her, she's my sounding board. She's my, well, frankly, my brain. Definitely say my wife, without a doubt. Fantastic. And you said you uh, graduated from Harvard and you've done some things since then as far as educational. What are some magazines or articles or podcasts or resources that you listen to? How about my own? Um, we just started uh, a, a podcast, uh, Vast Voices, which is uh, on all the social, social uh, media, or I should say uh, all the podcast 
um, outlets, uh, and it's vastsolutionsgroup.com. We have a YouTube site, uh, vastsolutionsgroup.com. Um, I have a book, my third book coming out. It's called The uh, Family Wealth Manifesto. You can get that at thefamilywealthmanifesto.com. So I, I've spent a lot of time doing research on um, really uh, on elements that I think are, are of interest to our clients base and who's our client base again entrepreneurs usually in the united states who are looking for uh tax help so uh i would say any any anywhere where i could get information that's going to provide value to me to provide uh, an outlet for our, our clients and prospects that being those social media outlets now that's what i would uh, say to that I love it that your book is coming, your third book is coming out. You'll have to listen to one of the podcasts that I interviewed a publisher and uh, all about how to promote your book. And there's a checklist that, that you'll have to listen to on a previous podcast. But I uh, <laughs> just thought I'd share that with you, Kenner. There's uh, some fun things in that little little nuggets that you can use to help promote your book as you uh, release it. I like it. Yeah. What are you planning to do to, to launch your book? Mm, uh, you and I have talked about that. What are we doing? going to use Clubhouse going to actually use uh, social media, which again, I shoot before. I'm going to be on some podcasts, as a matter of fact, I'm kind of excited about that. And uh, we have decided, we just decided to do some live media events. Um, And then kind of lastly, uh, I do a lot of speaking, right? Well, I used to before the pandemic. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, bring a large number of uh, the books to our events when I'm speaking. And uh, hopefully there's going to gain some traction. So I think there's a lot of added value that could be had in the book. One example is uh, there's a kind of a bonus section in the book uh, based on the research that I've done, uh, researching Warren Buffett, who they're constru- they construe him as the Oracle of Omaha, and his research is truly, it, you know, it's groundbreaking, but people, I think, discount it. But I'm doing a little bit different research with respect to him, research that you don't normally see uh, it, as far as his investment goes. So I, it's a different take on his research, and that's a Again, a bonus portion of the book that I'm excited. I think it'll add a lot of value to a lot of families as it relates to their investments. That's excellent. I can't wait to read the book. You'll have to send me a copy and I'll give you my notes. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so what advice would you give someone wanting to pursue a career similar to yours? I would say get a mentor. Get a mentor that really cares deeply in what you're doing. If they can help you uh, become that that much more successful, which I bet you they can, that'll make your, uh, your drive, your, your, your journey easier because they've made the mistakes, right? And that, that potentially could cut down the mistakes that you would have made if it weren't for having that, um, that uh, mentor. That's number one. And I think that's a big one, by the way. And number two, I would say, just do it. There's so many people out there that, you know, for whatever reason, they don't have the confidence to, to, try something, try it, just try it. In the words of Nike, you know, how they used to say, you know, just do it, try it. Because believe it or not, sitting on your heels results in nothing. But if you go out and do, just do it, you never know. You might actually be able to bring in the income that you want. No, that's great advice. I think, uh, (laughs) all the, all the young, younger, you know, listeners that we have, the students out there, the aspiring, you know, business professionals and, entrepreneurs that are looking to to jump into this area i think that it's good to to have that mentor like you said and and understand you know what you're what you're going to get into right ask those questions for sure what's the one thing you wish you would have known before you began your career um marketing i didn't realize how important marketing was and if i would have done that my life would have been 10 times easier well, good. I am glad that you have found your place and found where you can learn more and apply the things that you learn. That's awesome. If you had uh, an extra, let's say, five hundred grand to spend on your marketing budget, how would you spend it? Leave it to the marketing coach who knows how to do it. Good answer. I love it. I love that. That's the best answer I've heard so far since I've asked that question. <laughs> Very good. Uh, okay, what did I not ask you that I should have asked you? I'm now ready to begin my career because you know I'm a little bit older I like you know I'm fully admitting that um but right now I'm ready to really start knocking out of the park because to this point I feel as though you know I've, I've gotten all this knowledge now I, I'm doing this marketing stuff I've decided kind of what direction the companies should go that I run well now all right uh, I'm looking forward I'm excited now 
about my career going forward because I think really uh, I'm just now hitting my stride and I'm having fun and I think I'm going to have just that much, much more fun going forward. I love it. I love it. Yeah, because that was going to be a question I wanted to ask you what your goals and your aspirations and dreams are. So so say, you know, five, ten years from now, where do you want to be? Mm, um, I want to leave a legacy for my family and employees. Um, and that's important. So meaning my employees who are with me now, they're unbelievably good, right? I have three great attorneys. My CEO is great. And I want to take care of my employees as things do slow down. So that would, without a, a doubt, be uh, my answer. And that would be a legacy for my employees and my family. Oh, that's such a good answer. I love it. Yeah, the Kenner, the Kenner legacy. I think that's great. <laughs> yeah, I think we all want to leave some sort of legacy or impact on, you know, those that are around us or that can be inspired by what we do, right? I think that's, that's a great goal and dream to have. What's, what's a challenge that you're facing right now? Mm, it's my own challenge. Um, because challenges are just opportunities waiting to be had. But what I would say is, I, 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 you know, I'm all over the place. I, I, I come up, every single day I come up with another idea, and then every single day I have another opportunity thrown at me. Um, and maybe those aren't the exact numbers, but I'm going to say they're pretty close. So uh, I've been going in too many directions, and so I need to focus myself on a limited number of opportunities for me to be able to succeed. Because uh, I can be scattered, and i got to make sure I'm harnessing all of my energy and focus towards, let's just say, one project versus two as an example. I think you are not alone. A lot of entrepreneurs and that those types of minds are are definitely ideators and then have to, you know, I, I'm, I'm guilty of the same thing. So focusing on what you want to accomplish and getting it done. And, uh, you know, for me, it's writing the, the book that I've been trying to, to get out, you know, and do. So I kudos to you for getting it done, right? That's the, that's the thing you were able to focus. So see, if you can do that, now you can do anything, right? Yeah, yeah. And by the way, I would say, uh, uh, write a book. For a lot of people out there, you just got to write a book. There's so much content, as you know, that comes from when you're writing a book. For one, it gets you to think about, uh, well, your industry, right? And when you've written that book, you become an industry leader, hopefully, uh, a thought leader. Plus, you can break out the book into so many components, and that can go as social media fodder that could help propel your career that much better. Yeah, quotable moments. I love that. What's an accomplishment that you're most proud of that you want people to know more about? Mm, well, uh, our clients, sadly, I, we have a public policy or a uh, privacy policy. Um, I would love it if I could brag as to who our clients are, but I can't. I really wish I could. Um, so I would say we have a number of big name clients, very big name clients that I wish I could brag about um, because I think that would propel our business even another stratosphere. Um, that is the, the, without a doubt, that's what I would say. Bummer. Too bad you can't get them to sign a release form and, and uh, give, let them give you a testimonial, right? I know you're, you're in a tight industry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And working, working yeah. around that, right? Yeah. yeah. Client X says this, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> it's pretty tough. Same yeah. thing with healthcare industry too. Even on our website, you know, it just says, you know, initials as an example and our, and our website's at www.vast solutionsgroup.com we give you know we have initials but if i could put videos up there we have a video up there of kevin o'leary you know abc shark tank he said we could right but you know if i could show all our testimonials of all our clients in video form i mean it would be unbelievable i think that's a testament in some industries if you do not have that governor on you and you could uh, use a video as a testimonial put it on your email put it on your website etc cetera, etc cetera. i think that goes a long way into helping a business grow and sadly we cannot do that it, it is what it is because some of our clients come to us specifically for and because we have a uh, privacy it's really second to none right yeah you have to make sure that you stay on top of that so people do feel comfortable coming to you because it is personal their financials and, and all the things that they're doing so i get that but yeah too bad you can't use it as a, a marketing tool for yourself Maybe there'll be somebody that will talk about you and help you accelerate that word of mouth advertising by then talking about you to others and giving you those referrals and, and you know, being able to record it and give you exp express written permission. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, one more question for you. You ready? I love it. This has been good. Hopefully it's helpful for your listeners and somehow it can help them to propel them to do uh, uh, to stay away from some of the mistakes I've done. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, what's the biggest surprise that you've had 
in the last few months and why? Mm, Clubhouse. I would say the utilization of Clubhouse has uh, helped our business and that has surprised me. I didn't realize social media, and that's all Clubhouse is, and social media apps in different form. I'm surprised by how much it's helped my business to grow and it's helped me to meet so many interesting people from all over the world. Plus, it's surprised me and that it's taught me a little bit more about myself than I think I ever would have expected from a social media app. I have to agree with that for sure. Excellent, Kenner. Well, thank you so much. Any last words of wisdoms that you'd like to share with the audience as we go through this marketing expedition together? You know, what I would say is, you know, we've talked about, obviously, we're talking about a lot of what I've done. But I think more than anything, from the little bit we've talked about, I've figured out that, well, really, I'm amplifying the fact that one should go to a marketing special. And I know I'm preaching to the choir. Obviously, people are on here because they're interested in marketing. But I think this thing cathartic in a way that it, it, I'm reminded that someone's got to get on the phone with uh, a marketing professional because if they want to take their business to the next level, that's the quickest, easiest way to do it. I love that. Thank you so much, Kenner. Thanks for joining me on the show and going through this journey with us together. And one last time, tell people how they can reach you, how they can get a hold of your new book once it comes out, the podcast name, all the all the good stuff that they need to, to hear from you right now. All the good stuff. Uh, you know, they can uh, go to my personal website, which is rkennerfrench.com, R-K-E-N-N-E-R, French, F-R-E-N-C-H.com. All my social media stuff's on there. All my contact information's on there. Or they could go to our holding company, which is vastholdingsgroup.com. All the companies that uh, we've invested in, et cetera, all their information is there. And our main company is Vast Solutions Group. Dot com, which is uh, kind of our main social media outlet. That's our main branding company. And that would be true of Bass, of YouTube. Again, if you go to VastSolutionsGroup.com on YouTube, that's where you'll find us. Same thing with Instagram, VastSolutionsGroup.com. And the same thing for uh, even Twitter, VastSolutionsGroup.com. All our main brands for our company, for our main branded company, is, can be found at VastSolutionsGroup.com. And I, again, really appreciate you uh, taking the time to do this. I've had fun. And again, I've, I've, it's been cathartic because I've been able to figure some stuff out about myself during this time. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kenner. This has been great. And for those of you listening, until next time, enjoy the journey. And of course, if you leave us a review, that's the best thing you can do for us. And we always appreciate your reviews. So until next time, enjoy the journey. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Expedition Podcast. Find more online at peppershock.com. Wouldn't it be great if there was one place you can go to get all the latest information and tips about marketing and advertising? The Marketing Expedition community is that place. People like you gather in our online community to build relationships with others and find the latest marketing trends, tactics, tools, and technology. We help you build your brand and your bottom line. Start your adventure today. Visit themarketingexpedition.com to find out more.